What gave you the idea for a video-based site about prostate disorders and prostate cancer? How have people been responding to this site so far? I think increasingly it's difficult for individuals to read medical information and get a good understanding. They can't understand controversies. There's a lot of things that are hard to explain in just written material. And studies have shown that people who view information as a video actually some can get better absorption of that information. And so it was that coupled with my desire to continue to educate people that led me to create this website. What do you find to be the most difficult things to communicate effectively using your video strategies? It's easy to give people information about questions they should ask and some general factual materials. But the challenge with prostate cancer management is understanding the trade-offs that occur with different approaches. And that requires giving them statistics or probabilities or odds of something happening. That's not something that people easily absorb, and so it's hard to convey that even in a short video. You have been a long-time advocate for the application of careful patient monitoring as opposed to aggressive therapy for many men diagnosed with prostate cancer. Do you think there is an increasing willingness to apply this form of management today using active surveillance techniques outside the academic prostate cancer community? Years ago, I was struck by the absence of information about what happens to patients with different methods and whether or not treating them aggressively actually gave significantly better results than treating them more conservatively. So we published data that said that conservative therapy is an option. It doesn't mean it's the best option. It doesn't mean it's right for everybody. But it is an option that needs to be discussed with every patient. That message was not well received 15 years ago. And I think that there has been a growing recognition that PSA testing has allowed us to diagnose many early cancers that are not life-threatening. And now people acknowledge we are over-treating the disease. And therefore, a conservative approach for some period of time is more reasonable than it ever was before. And that's evidenced by the fact that many major universities have programs to do active surveillance. So I think it is become clearly more accepted at the academic level. Now the question is whether the general practitioner is likely to be more forthcoming with the information. Why do you think it has been so hard for the various elements of the medical community to come together to issue any sort of consensus statement about screening for and early detection of prostate cancer? Do you think such a consensus may now be possible? The message about screening for prostate cancer has been very complicated since we had PSA available. The problem is that some doctors have different agendas. There have been clearly people that are very strong proponents of early detection and aggressive therapy. And even the absence of good scientific data did not stop them from being very strong in their message. On the other hand, you have many people who are more scientific and evidence-based, and they recognize that we haven't had the information that permitted such strong recommendation. Now that we have new studies that give us some information, that, or better information, I think it will be possible to craft a message that is more reflective of the information we have available. So maybe these two extremes can begin to come together. That is my hope. It doesn't make it easier, but with more facts available, it's hard to ignore those facts in a message that we craft. What do you think the world of prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of early-stage, low-risk prostate cancer will look like five or ten years from now? One of the exciting developments has been the acknowledgement that we can prevent prostate cancer. That's one piece of it. We can prevent it. The question then becomes, can we use that information to investigate preventing progression of someone that has prostate cancer? Because that way, we even lessen the chance that we're going to overtreat the disease. So there's exciting information that gives us an opportunity to say, OK, we can move forward. We can prevent the disease. Let's see how to apply that in the patients who have minimal risk disease and maybe stop their disease from getting worse.